In this module, we shall learn about financial regulators and its aim. We are going to talk about SEBI, RBI, Ministry of Corporate Affairs, PR, FDA, etc. After studying the module, you shall be able to know the concept of financial regulators and know the salient features of regulations of banks in India. Let us first understand what is financial regulator and its aim. The financial regulation is regulation or supervision which subjects financial institutions to certain requirements, constraints and guidelines intending to maintain the integrity of financial system. This may be handled by either government or non-government organizations. The aims of regulation are market confidence to maintain confidence in the financial system, financial stability for contributing to the protection and improvement of stability of the financial system, consumer protection to secure the suitable amount of protection for consumers, reduction in the finance related crime. Let us know that various financial regulators across the nations are. In United States, we have US Securities and Exchange known as SEC, Financial Industry Regulatory Authority FINRA, Office of the Thrift Supervision OTS, Federal Reserve System FED and Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation FDIC. In United Kingdom, we have Financial Conduct Authority FCA, Prudential Regulation Authority PRA. Similarly, in Brazil, we have Branco Central do Brazil BCB, Comissão Valora, Mobiliary CVM. In case of China, we have China Securities Regulatory Commission CSRC, China Insurance Regulatory Commission CIRC, China Banking Regulatory Commission CBRC. If we take financial regulators in Indian context, we have Reserve Bank of India RBI, Securities and Exchange Board of India that is SEBI, Ministry of Finance, Ministry of Corporate Affairs and Insurance Regulator Authority of India that is IRAI. Now we shall move on to discuss the financial regulators in India. The supervision and regulation of the Indian financial system is carried out by various regulatory authorities like Securities and Exchange Board of India SEBI, Reserve Bank of India RBI, Ministry of Finance, Ministry of Corporate Affairs, Insurance Regulatory Authority of India and Pension Funds Regulatory and Development Authority. The Reserve Bank of India is the foremost authority that regulates and supervises the important part of the financial system. The controlling role of the RBI covers commercial banks, some financial institutions, urban cooperative banks and non-banking financial companies. Moreover, some other financial institutions in turn supervise and regulate different institutions in the financial sector. For example, National Bank for Agricultural and Rural Development NABAD, Overseas Regional Rural Banks and the Cooperative Banks and National Housing Bank supervises housing finance companies. Activities of the corporate like deposit taking other than NBFCs registered under Companies Act are regulated by the Department of Company Affairs which is under the Government of India at the same time not those which are under isolated statutes. The registrar of cooperatives of various states 
on account of single state cooperatives and the central government in the case of multi state cooperatives are joint controllers with the RBI for UCBs and NABARD for rural cooperatives. Whereas RBI and NABARD see the banking functions of the cooperatives and the management control rests with the state central government. This dual control affects the supervision and regulation of the cooperative banks. Securities and Exchange Board of India that is SEBI regulates the capital market, mutual funds and other capital intermediaries are regulated. The insurance sector is regulated by the Insurance Regulatory and Development Authority and the pension funds by the Pension Funds Regulatory and Development Authority. Let us now understand the salient features of present regulations. At present, financial regulations in India are product oriented. That is, each product is separately regulated. For example, fixed deposits and other banking products are regulated by the RBI, small saving products by the Government of India, mutual funds and equity markets by SEBI, insurance by IRDA, and the new pension scheme by PFRDA. All these regulators have a key mandate to safeguard the interests of the consumers. These may be investors, policyholders, or pension fund subscribers depending on the product. India has a bequest financial regulatory architecture. The present work division between RBI, SEBI, IRDA, PFRDA and Forward Market Commission was not designed, rather it has evolved over the years with the sequence of piecemeal decisions as a response to immediate pressures from time to time. Each regulator have their own rules on registration, code of conduct, commissions and fees to monitor the product providers and distributors. RBI, SEBI and IRDA have grievance redress procedures through sector financial ombudsman services. Let us first discuss the Securities and Exchange Board of India that is SEBI. SEBI is the apex body for regulating the securities market in India. It came into existence in 1988 and was given a statutory powers on April 12, 1992 through 1992 SEBI Act. The preamble of SEBI describes the basic functions of the Securities and Exchange Board of India as quote, to protect the interests of investors in securities and to promote the development of and to regulate the securities market and for matters connected therewith or incidental thereto." Unquote. It has following powers. Number one, protection of the interests of investors in securities. Secondly, development and promotion of the securities market. And thirdly, regulation and control of the security market. The regulatory jurisdiction of SEBI covers corporates on the factors relating to issue of capital and transfer of securities in addition to all intermediates and persons associated with securities market. SEBI has powers for number one, regulating and controlling the business of stock exchange and any other securities market operations in India. Secondly, registering and regulating the working of stock brokers, sub brokers, etc. Thirdly, promoting and regulating self regulatory organizations. Fourthly, prohibiting fraudulent and unfair trade practices. And fifthly, gathering information, undertaking inspection, conducting inquiries, and auditing the stock exchanges, intermediaries, self regulatory organizations, mutual funds, and 
any other persons associated with the securities market. The departments in SEBI are first is Market Intermediaries Regulation and Supervision Department which is responsible for the registration, compliance, monitoring, supervision and checking of all market intermediaries of all segments of the markets namely equity, equity derivatives, debt and debt related derivatives. Second is market regulation department which is responsible for supervising the functions and operations except relating to derivatives of securities exchanges, their subsidiaries and other market institutions such as clearing and settlement organizations and depositories. Third department is derivatives and new product departments. Responsibilities of this department include supervising the functioning and operations of derivatives exchange and addressing the investor complaints. Fourth is the corporation finance department. The matters handled by this department are issuance and listings of securities that will include the initial and continuous listing requirements and corporate governance and accounting or auditing standards and corporate restructuring through takeovers, buybacks, delisting etc. Next is investor management department. This department's responsibilities include registering and regulating venture capital funds, mutual funds, collective investment schemes, foreign institutional investors including plantation schemes, foreign venture capital investors, portfolio managers and custodians. Next is integrated surveillance department. It is responsible for monitoring market activity through market systems, data from other departments and any other type of analysis using the analytical software. Next is the investigations department. The responsibilities of this department are conducting investigations on potentially illegal market activities, providing referrals to the enforcement department and supporting the enforcement department in imposing SEBI action against violators. Another department is the enforcement department which is responsible for proceedings related to regulatory action and obtaining redress for violations of securities laws and regulations against the market participants, issuers and individuals and other entities that breach the securities laws and regulations. Another department is the legal affairs department. The responsibilities of this department include providing legal counsel to the board and any of its other departments and to handle non-enforcement litigation. Enquiries and adjudication department handles quasi-judicial matters and provide timely hearings and initiate adjudication brought by the other departments against alleged violations which are within SEBI's disciplinary jurisdiction. There is another department known as Office of Investor Assistance and Education. This office supports SEBI's operations by handling investors complaints centrally and be the focal point of SEBI's investor education effort. There is another department known as Journal Services Department which supports all the internal operations of SEBI. Treasury and Accounts Division handles the work related to development of SEBI's internal budget and accounting system, presentation of report and budgets to SEBI, maintenance of internal accounts and records and developing internal control systems for disbursements and collection and other financial control and managing the investments done by SEBI. Another department is Facilities Management Division which is responsible for the establishing and maintenance of physical facility housing of the regulator and its related needs. There is another department known as Department of Economic and Policy Analysis. This department handles the functions related to the Division of Policy Analysis DPA 
and Division of Economic Analysis DEA. The Office of the Chairman has important subdivisions such as Office of International Affairs, Communication Division, Human Resource Division and the Office of the Executive Assistance to the Chairman. There is Information Technology Department which performs the role of Technical Support Group for SEBI. Now moving on to discuss the Reserve Bank of India. The RBI was established on April 1, 1935 in compliance with the provisions of the Reserve Bank of India Act 1934. The central office of the RBI was first settled in Calcutta. However, it has now been permanently moved to Mumbai since 1937. It is where the governor sits and formulates the policies. Though originally the RBI was privately owned but since the nationalization of RBI in 1949, it is a fully owned bank of government of India. The preamble of the Reserve Bank of India describes the basic functions of the Reserve Bank as quote to regulate the issue of bank notes and keeping of reserves with a view to securing monetary stability in India and generally to operate the currency and credit system of the country to its advantage." Unquote. As the supervisor and regulator of the financial system, the RBI prescribes broad parameters of banking operations within which countries' banking and financial system functions. It also contributes towards maintaining confidence of public in the financial system, protect depositors' interest and thereby provide cost-effective banking services to the public. The Central Board of Directors govern the affairs of the Reserve Bank. The Board of Directors are appointed by the Government of India, keeping in line with the Reserve Bank of India Act. The Central Board is appointed for a period of four years. It constitutes of official directors. The full time is Governor and not more than four Deputy Governors. Non-official directors are nominated by the government. Main functions of RBI are number one, monetary authority, that is formulation, implementation and monitoring of the monetary policy. The objective is maintaining the price stability and ensuring adequate flow of credit to productive sectors. Second main function is regulator and supervisor of the financial system. Here, the role of RBI is in prescribing broad parameters of banking operations within which the country's banking and financial system must function. The objective is maintaining the public confidence in the system, protecting the depositors' interest and providing cost-effective banking services to the poor. Next main function is to act as manager of foreign exchange. It acts as manager of foreign exchange under the Foreign Exchange Management Act 1999. The objective is facilitation of external trade and payment and promoting orderly development and maintenance of foreign exchange markets in India. Another major function is issuance of currency that is issuing and exchanging or destroying the currency and coins which are not fit for circulation. The objective is giving the public satisfactory amount of supplies of currency notes and coins and also in best quality. Another is the development role that is performing extensive range of promotional functions to support national goals. Other related functions are number one RBA performs a function of being a banker to the government whereby it performs merchant banking function to the central and the state governments and also acts as their banker and secondly RBI is also a banker to banks whereby it maintains banking accounts of all scheduled banks. The RBI is made up of 26 departments which focus on policy issues in the RBI's functional areas and internal operations. There are 28 regional offices and branches which are the operational arms and customer interfaces of the Reserve Bank headed by the regional directors. 
Additionally, the smaller branches or sub offices are headed by a general manager or deputy general manager. Training centers, the Reserve Bank Staff College at Chennai caters to the training needs of the selected RBI officers. The College of Agricultural Banking at Pune trains staff of cooperative and commercial banks including regional rural banks. Moreover, the zonal training centers located at various regional offices train non-executive staff. There are RBI funded institutions to provide training and research on banking issues, economic growth and banking technology such as National Institute of Bank Management that is NIBM at Pune, Indira Gandhi Institute of Development Research that is IGIDR at Mumbai and Institute for Development and Research in Banking Technology at Hyderabad. RBI's fully owned subsidiaries include National Housing Bank, Bharatiya Reserve Bank Note Mudran Private Limited, Deposit Insurance and Credit Guarantee Corporation, etc. Moreover, the majority stakeholder in the National Bank for Agriculture and Rural Development, that is NABAD, is RBI. Next, we will discuss the Ministry of Corporate Affairs. MCA is responsible for regulating the corporate affairs in India. It does so through the Companies Act 1956 and 2013 and other allied acts, bills and rules. It also protects investors and offers many important services to stakeholders. MCA has supervision powers over the three professional bodies, Institute of Chartered Accountants of India, Institute of Company Secretaries of India and the Institute of Cost Accountants of India. The expert bodies are constituted under three different acts of the parliament for legitimate and deliberate development of the experts concerned. MCA is also bestowed with the responsibility of carrying out functions of the central government related to the administration of 1932 Partnership Act 1932 1980 Societies Registration Act and 1951 Companies Act. Moving on to discuss the Pension Fund Regulatory and Development Authority that is PRFDA. The PFRDA was set up by the Government of India on August 23, 2003 for promoting income security in old age by establishing, regulating and developing pension funds to protect the interests of the endorsers of the schemes of pension funds and for matters connected therewith. PFRDA as the controller for the NPS is in charge for registration of the different intermediaries in the system such as CRA, NPS, PFRDA also monitors the performance of the various intermediaries and plays a significant role in safeguarding the interest of the subscribers. It is also responsible for regulating the manner in which subscriber contribution are invested by PFs and will make all efforts to ensure fair play for the subscribers. It also makes sure that all stakeholders are in line with the guidelines and regulations issued by PFRDA from time to time. Benefits of National Pension Fund are number one tax benefits. NPS consists of the income tax deduction that is available to the individuals when they make their own contribution to the fund. There is an overall limit of INR 1 lakh for contributions under the eligible investments for section ATC, pension fund contributions and contributions to NPS. NPS gives its subscribers the control on the choice of investment made by them and the fund manager who manages the investments. Subscribers can switch over from one investment option to another or from one fund manager to another subject to certain regulatory restrictions. NPS has the lowest account maintenance cost when contrasted with similar pension products available in India. 
like retirement plans offered by insurance companies and mutual funds. The cost matters the most while saving for the long term objectives such as retirement. Till the retirement pension wealth accumulation grows over a period of time with the compounding effect, the account maintenance charges being low, the benefit of accumulated pension wealth to the subscriber eventually becomes last. There are problems with numerous regulators in India. Let us discuss them. There are different regulatory prerequisites because of numerous regulators in India which often lead to regulatory arbitrage. Consider for example the similarity between mutual funds and ULIPs. Mutual funds which is regulated by SEBI and ULIPs which are regulated by IRDA. For mutual funds SEBI imposes very different level of disclosure and there is ongoing transparency on the outcomes of mutual funds as compared to the standards of regulations on distributors. The bank employees who come under regulation of the RBI can distribute financial products such as mutual funds and insurance products repeat insurance products without adhering to the rules and regulations of SEBI and IRDA. Hence the present arrangement has gaps and there is no regulator who is in charge for them. There are numerous kinds of Ponzi schemes that surface now and then in India which are not regulated by any of the existing agencies are a result of it. Moreover, other organizations like the CHIT funds appear to be completely out of the purview of any of the financial sector regulator. There is overlapping between laws and agencies of the existing financial agencies which lead to incidences in which conflicts between regulators arise. This has consumed the energy of economic policy makers and also held back market development. Let us now study the regulatory reliance on credit rating agencies. Think tanks such as World Pension Council has argued that most European governments pushed dogmatically for adapting the Basel II recommendations. Basel II was adopted in 2005, transported in the European Union law via the Capital Requirements Directive in 2008. Essentially, European banks were forced, for example, when assisting the solvency of European Union based financial institutions to rely more than ever on the standardized assessments of credit risk marketed by two private US agencies Moody's and Standards and Poor. Thus using public policy and ultimately taxpayers money to strengthen an anti-competitive duopolistic industry. Ironically European governments have abdicated a key component of their regulatory authority in favor of the non-European highly deregulated private cartel. We will now summarize what we have learned in this module. A financial regulation is the regulation or supervision of a financial system aiming at maintaining its integrity. There are various financial regulations in India. Repeat, there are various financial regulators in India such as SEBI, RBI, Ministry of Finance, MCA, IRAI, PFRDA, etc. The financial regulation in India is concerned with towards product regulation that is each product is separately regulated. Each regulator have their own rules for registration, code of conduct, commissions and fees to monitor the product providers and distributors but excess control of the RBI and SEBI are not good for the economy.